Okay, here's a, another um, supplemental video for the, or trying to catch up video uh, for this term. And it's about question creation. And I'm gonna show you five of six stages of question uh, creation that uh, Lois Bloom uh, documented in research way back in 1991. Um, I'm going to share a screen. I was just double checking this thing was being recorded because if it wasn't, I'd have to shoo myself. Uh, and in any event, here, here I think is the uh, PowerPoint I want to show. I'll start with this PowerPoint. I'm going to show you this two ways. The first way is I'm simply going to go through the stages, which you can simply use as a reference. Uh, you can check this PowerPoint or out on the recording that you're watching, or I will provide that for you. Uh, you'll find it in, uh, in uh, information. I'll post this PowerPoint, which gives you stages across child, early child language. Um, so stages of children's question making. When kids begin to want to ask questions early on, two to three years of age, right? And the earliest um, approach to question asking in English, this is, uh, by the way, children's question making in English. Keep that in mind. And uh, kids use either single words or word combinations or parts of sentences. They maintain the subject verb or subject complement or subject verb complement order, the declarative order. So mommy book. Daddy where, similarly at stage two, you, but it's full sentence by that point. You like this, um, why you catch it? And in that case, uh, the second case, they tagged a why onto the beginning of the sentence, but they maintain the declarative order, right? The sentence is, you catch it. And they tag a why onto it, see that? So the declarative order is maintained, subject for a compliment. That's the declarative English or order. I apologize for the barking going on in the back. Uh, but what can I do? Stage three, fronting. And what they do, the kids do, they recognize in adults, in adult question forms in English, um, an auxiliary, shows up at the beginning of the sentence. And the copula sometimes is handled as an auxiliary and it, it, it shows up, it's e either as an auxiliary, it shows up at the beginning of the sense of the question or um, the copula itself moves up. So the child uh, in the sentence, the teddy is tired, asks the question, is the teddy is tired? because the is is copied and moved up front. See that? Now the question, the typical, the question would be if an adult asked it, asked it, is the teddy tired? Uh, the second sentence is, did you had a cookie? Well, you had a cookie is the uh, basic sentence, right? Kid may, that's the declarative, you had a cookie. Child adds did, because that's an auxiliary, past tense auxiliary, in fact, that the child, but tags it onto the front because it is the case that when the child develops further towards the adult question form, towards producing the adult question form, they will use they, they recognize at this point that an auxiliary has to be there and that's what will be there as they move further up the developmental ladder. Let's go to stage four. And in stage four, there is subject auxiliary inversion. So we have, do you like ice cream? This, this, this sentence would be, you like ice cream. 
the declarative, but if you could, could tag it, you like ice cream, don't you? But um, otherwise it would be, do you like ice cream? Do is the auxiliary that is present tense auxiliary that goes with the verb like. Or um, where can I can draw, in that case, the child has moved the WH object of the sentence into the first position because in an adult question, the auxiliary would move up in front of the subject as well. So the, the adult form of the question would be, where can I draw? But the child's form of the question is where I can draw. In that case, uh, leaving the auxiliary modal in its uh, subject verb complement position. See that? Continuing on pretty much with earlier, the behavior at the earlier stages. The full movement of both the auxiliary and the WH uh, question into the pre uh, subject position occurs at stage five in English. So we have why did he go out, the WH question, the WH term, why, and the auxiliary did, signaling past by the way, and then you have subject verb complement, he go out. Why did he go out? Um, you don't get the inversion of the auxiliary if it's a negative. If there's a not tagged on to the auxiliary in the original statement, he didn't go out and the child has a question, he would say, the child would then produce why he didn't go out at stage five. Subsequently, the child does get then the second the movement with the knot on it, and then it becomes at stage six, why didn't he go out? That's stage five B. Okay. I am gonna explain this in a different way now. I gave you simply a, a sequence of uh, stages here. You can look through that at your leisure and memorize these stages. However, I'm going to present it from the point of view of why questions look like this in English. What really is the process that's going on? I would like to address the why and explain really what's happening in question formation. So I'm going to re-explain re this using, uh, I'm going to stop the share. And I am going to put up I hear dog beat, but I don't see the dog. So they're not supposed to be in here while I'm recording. They're worse, it's worse when they're out of here, isn't it? This is bad. Well, in any event, um, what I wanna post is uh, the, uh, uh, this thing, uh, the uh, comp, uh, the making a sentence thing. And I was clearing that off, this one off, I was, I did a version of this that I don't want to use. So I'm going to clean the, clear this off and just use the, uh, uh, the thing here. And let's, let's make questions. Okay. So let me share screen. Well, let me, yeah, let me share screen. Okay, you see this? Uh, remember a sentence I said has a CP slot. These, this is this, we're, you're using a form of this to do your final project, uh, to do, do the syntax analysis of sentences in the uh, Bloom and Leahy language sample. 
And this is represents, this chart represents the organization of sentences in English, where the sen all sentences have at the prior to the subject head have a slot, meaning your mind has a slot, a place for movement. It's a place for movement. There's nothing there unless it's moved. What do I mean by movement? After it's created, the sentence is created in your mind as a, a, a sentence with a noun phrase subject, which can have a head and a complement within it, and a verb phrase predicate, which can have a head and an object or complement in it, and tense, right, time, expressible either using an auxiliary to express it, or the, it's attached to the verb as a morpheme, tense, right? And aspect, time and aspect. Those, then you, I have just presented the organization of a sentence. Given those parts of a sentence, there's also a place in any sentence, um, in your mind for moving stuff. So after the sentence is formed in your mind, from the point of view of Chomsky here, I'm presenting this from the Chomskyan position here. After it's cre created in your mind as a noun phrase, subject, verb phrase, predicate with time, things can be moved before it ever gets out of your mouth or as it comes out of your mouth. Since the, the sentence is really produced as a whole in your mind, and then it comes out, however, it has to come out in a sequence out of your mouth, things can move. That's one explanation for why, what goes on here. Well, in any event, a child could make it early on, the child doesn't move anything and simply creates a sentence out of, the, it just puts a question mark, um, such as you like this. Two things the child will do. You like this, you, here's the sentence, like, this, right? That's your basic sentence. And just put a question, just rising intonation, question mark, in other words, in the question intonation. You like this? Or uh, or the second example here was what? If I could have a memory, that would be way better. Um, why you catch it? Why the child may recognize notice that WH things go at the beginning. So they take a WH, Y, U, was it catch it? See, I'm, my memory doesn't let, yeah, why you catch it? Hmm. Catch it. Yeah, everybody see that? Everything stays the same, nothing moves. Just throw a uh, throw a, a WH question thing at the very beginning. Well, the next stage is fronting. And in the fronting stage, the copula or a, an auxiliary, the kid noticed that, that, that sentences um, have auxiliaries. So, um, make and make does one of two things and let me do the second one first because i think it's easier to, to make the point here um sorry i have to jump i don't know if you're seeing the when i'm jumping back and forth across uh, powerpoints here if i had a memory i wouldn't have to do that is the teddy is tired and did you had a cookie let's do did you had a cookie the question the child creates is is, 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 you maybe still be seeing this slot, but I'm moving it all over the place. Did, past tense, did you had a cookie? So that shouldn't be capped, right? Well, everybody, did you had a cookie? Well, the, sen the sentence is, you had a cookie. You had a cookie. Let me say, you had a cookie, right? You had a cookie, and the kid simply threw 
a past tense auxiliary in front. Did you had a cookie? Prior, the kid was using a WH question. That goes in front too. These are the two things that go in front. A WH uh, thing, pronoun, th a, a WH thing, and an auxiliary. Because it, it could have been, why did you something or cookie, right? Well, did you had a cookie is what the child does at this point. Throws an auxiliary up there. That's interesting, interesting, interesting. Fronting. Uh, the other example given here on this uh, bloom thing is, uh, uh, what's the other example? Sorry, I'm pointing out. Is, um, is the teddy is tired? The child will, if the copula is the verb, if the copula is a verb, a copula sounds very much like the teddy is tired. If I say the teddy is tired, right? The teddy is tired. And that's present, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll write that here, present. Okay, the teddy. So I gotta move things around here. The teddy is tired. Well, the child puts, knowing that a copula in, is, it belongs here in his system knows it. Is the teddy is tired? Not a copula, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a, uh, Auxiliary, typically an auxiliary. In this case, the copula would move there. Is the teddy tired? The teddy is tired, right? In that kind of a question, you do move the copula up there. It goes to CP. He throws one in CP, but doesn't replace, doesn't take this out, you know, doesn't really move it or copies it and uh, keeps it in two places at the same time. I'm saying that's what happens. I'll be honest with you. I don't, it doesn't really move. I, what really happens is I believe the, the, the kid takes a copy of the um, tense or a copy of the um, copula here, moves it. And then when after the movement takes place, the tense or the copula doesn't have to be expressed verbally. It's in the mind, but it doesn't have to be expressed. Yeah, don't worry about that. It's movement. Okay. Now, finally, you get the adult, you move towards the adult form of the question at stage five. Stage four. Yeah. Um, for the stage five, you get to the adult form of the question. For stage four, if it's not a WH question, you get an actual. Um, um, you like ice cream is the, is the, uh, is the uh, declarative sentence form, right? You like ice cream. Now it could be you like ice cream, don't you? It could become a question like this. That's the way kids do it early on. You like ice cream, right? Keep it that way. But if it was a question, a yes, no question, what would you do, everybody? That's right, you move the auxiliary up here, do. Now really, what do you mean? And what happens to, uh, I, I'd rather this be past tense, okay? I'm gonna make this liked for this purpose. You liked ice cream would become what? Yeah, did you like ice cream? I'd rather do it that way because it's clearer to you what really happens. It happened with like too, but it's way clearer this way. Did you like what happens? That's right. The past tense is taken off of like and moved up there. Now the past tense really becomes, is expressed as the auxiliary, right? because you could always say you did like ice cream and that's the same as you liked 
ice cream. That's past tense. You did like ice cream three years ago, but I see you're not eating it anymore, right? Somebody claims, well, I never liked ice cream. Well, you could emphasize it and say, you, yes, you did like ice cream three years ago. Past tense, everybody, right? Two ways to produce past tense as an auxiliary or by, delete, by moving it over to the verb and putting a morpheme on the verb and suppressing the auxiliary. Well, in the sense of a question, in the in the uh, in in the uh, the creation of a question in English, two things move. Uh, w w w two things move the wh things, and the, we'll go we'll go into the wh things more in a second. And the auxiliary at stage four, it's the auxiliary that does the first move, and and the kid figures it out. So it becomes, did you like ice cream? Or do you like ice cream right now? It would be do, I, I, the, the earlier sign the kid would be very, very in present tense, wouldn't it? Wouldn't the child be? So the, if the kid says, do you, the child says, do you like ice cream? Uh, I could change you to she. And and then it becomes likes in present tense, right? I, I need to, I wanted this to change. So, but but when it if it's the question, here let me put another. Let me add insert a uh, a row. She she likes ice cream. Right, she likes ice cream, and I'll keep liked down here. I don't want the yes on here for crying out loud. Let's see, she liked ice cream. She likes ice cream. Well, what's the S on likes? That's right, it's third person present. How could present be expressed as an auxiliary? That's right, as does. So then it would be, does she like ice, does she like ice cream? In a question, right? And that's the same thing. Auxiliary tense peels off the verb, becomes an auxiliary, and hangs a left and goes way up to comp. See that? CP slot. But you see that? Does she like ice cream? And I'm gonna put a parenthesis around these because you don't repeat it twice. And parentheses means it's not it's no longer said when it's moved. I really think it's copied and pasted, and the original stays in your brain in the same place it always was. And I'm quoting Chomsky's latest, latest 20. Um, I think it's up to 2016 I have his material. And he was saying he was he was suggesting it's copy and paste. Everybody sees that. Finally we get to stage 5 which is the full the full um adult form. And uh I'm going to take the, the uh, I'm going to make uh, modify this to where did he go? And uh, why didn't he go out? So where did he go? Let's make the sentence he. Let me insert a row and do. He went out or to the movies. Let's make it even better. To the movies. 
we don't go to the movies anymore, right? That's over with. The end. Too dangerous. He went to the movies. Well, what if you don't know? He went to the what? What? Where'd he go? Yeah, how do you make this that question? That's right. I just did it. Where did he? What happens? Yeah, that's right. This becomes go. Went becomes go, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to put went in parentheses and change that to go this way. Why does went become go? You Yes, that is correct. Because went is go plus past tense. And that became the, the uh, auxiliary did for past tense. You could say he did go to the movies. You could, you could really emphasize that yesterday he did go to the and say, oh my God, I'm not going to go near him. He has to quarantine. He did go to the movies. If you're not sure where he went, what do you do then? You take that did, the went, pull, pull did off of go, put past tense off of go, becomes did, copy it, move it, or just plain move it, whichever you think really happens and make it did. But if you don't know where, if you don't know, by the way, if you didn't quite hear or absolutely didn't believe what you heard, so you, you, you replace the movies with where, because where is a pronoun that would work in the, uh, it would work in the, uh, as an object of go, right? Go where? Well, you take that and also copy and paste it and then stop pronouncing it at the end or else move it up to the front CP. So where did uh, he, where did he go? This explains the stages, the bloom stages. The child learns to copy and paste or move in from one position to another and suppress in the process learn engages in that process that's really neurological that's what the mind does following me and that explains these um stages right because the stages really a, a developmental stage really reflects a reorganization of the way the mind moves things around or organizes things that's what causes stages of any type of a stage represents the mind's reorganization or development of a new process for organizing and moving things around mentally. I hope this makes sense, but I do want to ask you a question as you reflect on the material I just presented. I will also present another, this is going to be followed up uh, shortly with another video on the creation of negations, negatives in English. It's a simpler explanation to make and it's a similar explanation to this. Not as complicated, but similar. Would it have been better, I have this question and this is for the, remember, I'm, I'm not giving a final exam here. So I, I am gonna ask you and I'm gonna repeat this again. I'm gonna put a note up for you. Could you um, tell me whether you would have been more comfortable, you're more comfortable just having me present the stages with a description that you can memorize or follow it up with an explanation or include in the, in the stages an explanation for why the stages appear. In other words, the stages, you can simply memorize that first children produce one or two words with a question intonation. They, then they make a sentence with a question intonation um, and uh, maintain subject verb complement order. Then they tag uh, WH pronoun type uh, pronouns onto, I misspelled this here, onto the uh, in, in front of, uh, oops, I went to five. No, oh. they, 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 uh, 
no, they tag uh, auxiliaries on to the front, but maintain subject verb complement order. Then they invert. They start learning to invert. So you have an inversion, the inversion order. So you can just simply remember the sequence as the stages. Would you prefer to do that or does it help uh, for me to have, ha has it helped for me to ex have explained that what's happening is things are moving from one place to another and to provide the concept of organization and the mind's function of organizing. And in fact, as you noticed, I gave you in this course, the Lust book to work with. And that book is very explanatory, very much about explaining the process of language, which is the e la the uh, I language, the internal language, the, that process of the, the mind's act, the mind um, which engages in a process of, of creating or analyzing noun phrase subject, subjects for phrase predicates, which have the components in them, uh, heads and complements, heads and complements, along with tenses, auxiliaries, which code tenses and modals, and then questions and negations and other forms involve passive structures, involve movements of things or other kinds of processes. Does the process description help you or do you find them to be a little too overwhelming uh, or problematic. I'd like you to be honest with me on that. I'd very much like your input on that. Uh, so I will provide a place for your input uh, and I will uh, put a, uh, a, uh, a message up uh, requesting that from you. I'm gonna ask that you respond to me honestly uh, not don't give me a response that I, I you think I want to hear. Uh, to let me know specific, um, honestly whether the explanations help or not at this mo at this point in your your academic career. Okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs>